All right, hello everyone. Um, we're working with Homer Energy, and I, I put a long one up, but I thought I'd do some simple tricks and save everyone else a headache. Let's say you've got your data and you've got your grid set up, and you've set up some things, and we're going to build off of my earlier work just because it was to be a really long video. You've inserted your numbers, and you kind of know what your your load's going to be, and you've got your maybe your intermittent load set up, and you know what that's going to be. And now you decide, okay, well, I want to add some things. Let's say I'm going to add a, let's say I'm going to add a PV array. Easy enough. All right. So what I've done now is I've added the PV array, but that's not going to be enough. I go over here and I say, okay, well, I need to add a converter too. And the converter, let's go ahead and give it the converter a sign. Um, some of these numbers are already there, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say that I'm gonna add a 50 kilowatt converter and a 75, and I'm not gonna make this too big because this could take a long time to process, and we don't want to do that. So I've got a DC side here, and I've got my converter to bridge these two things. And so what I do is I say, okay, um, I've already set up my where my location and where this is gonna be. And I've decided that, you know, this looks good. And I've also set my temperatures, as you can see here. Uh, temperatures are in Celsius only. And I've set up my constraints. I'm going with the idea that this needs to be 45% renewable or zero because um, and that's the percentage that's going to be there. So I'm like, well, how much solar do I need? So I, I'll go ahead and I'll try. 100, I'm going to try 50, and I'm going to try um, 1, 160. Yeah, now, when you do this, you can, you're going to, if you want the economics to play in, which is part of, of how this machine works, or how this program works, you have to add these in. And these are values that I took, that I found after my research. Also, you may want to choose sensitivities. Sensitivities are iterations or variances in which you set up. So, as you see here, I've, I've gone ahead and I've said, okay, I'm not going to have any sensitivities. I'm going to assume it's a standard 14% efficiency um, solar panel. So, I, I went ahead and click Run. I've got 48 simulations with 30 sensitivities. And so, it estimates it's going to run for 50 a minute or so. Not so bad. Now, uh, to help you out, I'm running a, an i core, an i7 Intel uh, gaming laptop with gigs of memory. It's a uh, ASUS G73. Great machine. Um, I'm told the newer versions are even more phenomenal. So it goes through and you see that um, it's setting this up, it's running these. And you could have this sit in simulation over here where it's going to produce a picture as well. I'm probably going to remove some of these so that it runs a little faster because it's a drag watching something run for a minute. This can get huge. And if you've watched the other video, you know that I've, I've spent well, well over 20 hours running a simulation. Um, and so what we discover is that we discover that um, you know this area here. You know now I've got if I go ahead and set zero. This is say you got a lot of area that solar works. All right, so let me take you to a part that was a pain in the butt for me. Let's say that um, you're like okay, well I, I know I can get away with 125. Well, that's the other thing, is you can go ahead and let's see what solar actually works. And it looks like 125 minimum. We got 160 here, 100. It's kind of interesting because what you see here, the reason the number is higher, is it's taking over a much larger percentage of the grid power. And of course, we've got the DC quick charger right here. And then we've got the different levels. So at if I'm only pulling 100 kilowatts, 100 megawatts, megawatt hours per year from the grid, you know, or you know, 120, let's say 120, I can get away with a lot less solar. But if I'm pulling zero kilowatts per year, I need 160. 
so it's a great decision for Evan. So let's go ahead and modify it. Now I'm going to show you guys how to add something that is um, was kind of important to me, and it's a fuel cell. Homer does fuel cells really differently than you'd expect. There is no fuel cell button. What you do is you go ahead and you add a tank. You can have an electrolyzer, you don't have to have one. If you have just a tank itself, select your size and the cost. I like to use a tank because I like to produce on site. And I'm, you can run as uh, not grid connected or you can compare the two. This middle one seems to work really well for me, so let's go ahead and show this. Now initially these show up just like this, but your generator is not doing anything. So let's pick a 41 or 42, not 41 kilowatts and, uh, no, I'm sorry, it's 42. And a 84. And I've already figured out these costs because I called around, but if you didn't, you'd make up costs here or call and get the costs and try to figure it out. Now, right now, it's a diesel generator. And these are my efficiencies. And that's about right for a diesel generator. So let's go ahead and go to hydrogen. Actually, that, that wasn't right, but... And I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to say that my generator, it's unlikely that my fuel cell is going to start up just right. So I've got a little bit of curve and then it's up and running. And it's about 52%. And given where I got my data from, that seems right. Now, given you see this right here and it's like, that's a weird shape. Why did you pick that? You would pick whatever one you wanted, but I was going on the bulk of where most of my cost is incurred and those are demand charges. So now you see the green line running through here. I've got 24 simulations with 30. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of some of this stuff because I want it to just run quickly. And you'll see drastic changes right up there. So let's go ahead and run it. And your runtime is, is anticipated to be a lot less. Eight seconds, very, very nice. And then you see right here, is it all the way through? And if I want to look at it, and actually let's say I want to see what was the better one. It likes 125, it definitely likes 84, and the rest of the stuff's pretty static, so it has no choice. And when I look at these, I see some, you know, my electrical looks very good. Um, I look at grid, net grid purchase is uh, better for annually, but you know not where I'd want to see it. Um, now, what I one of the things you bigger is not always better, and if you watch my previous video, you notice I used a 63 kilowatt in, um, fuel cell. This is nice; it lets you see how it's functioning, and then the level of output. And with the fuel cell, they use a um, a proton exchange membrane. So of course the mortar firing. This fuel cell that I modeled after has a 10,000 hour operation. But if you look here, this thing's going to last 49 years. So let's let's change the equation a little bit. Let's drop this down to 115. So now my solar is a little less. And let's let's go ahead and force my generator to run. Um, in fact, we're going to make it run during the weekdays, the remainder of this time, because we can't. So what I've done there, and, you know, I go ahead and run it. I like to start off with the picture, because the picture is nicer. Um, it takes about, two, like I said, it, when you first start off, you're going to begin very small and then you're going to build huge as you realize what all your options are and then from that point you'll be able to take it down. Um, so what we see here is we see now I'm pulling a lot from the grid too but you see that this is this is pretty nice because I've got 115 and are we using the fuel cell more? Yes we are. There's a little more dotted through. Let's get all let's get all like evil Okay, so 
let's say we got a um, a two thousand a two thousand kilowatt hour fuel cell. We got a monster, and I'm gonna I'm actually going to reduce the the solar to um, twenty five. And this is this is kind of showing how you do this. And go look at this. Oh, my tank's too small, and my electrolyzer is too small. And also, if you look here, my kilowatt hours that I'm pulling from the grid. Renewable fraction, 45%, and you have to watch all this stuff. So, where you think you're going to have an answer, you may not. So let's go into our, our efficiency constraints. Let's remove the zero because we don't want that anymore. Because it's throwing off your game. Homer does this all the time, so you want to be a little careful about it. Also, my tank is too small. So let's increase our tank to something obnoxious. And then further, let's go ahead and make this something, let's crank it up by 10. I mean, you wouldn't do this, but we're just we're playing with it. This is how you play with it, and you run it again. Your oil breaks down. This is what I was hoping to see. If you can't come across a viable solution, then you're not going to. You're like, well, where did I go wrong? Your electrolyzer is seventeen thousand kilowatts. That's never going to fly. That's that's too much load. And your fuel cell is only your fuel cell is only fifty two cent fifty two percent efficient. So now let's take it to something else. Let's say it's gonna be hundred and fifty. And you get it. We run it really fast. Your oil breaks Still no. So what we're saying is, okay, maybe I need to bring my my solar back up. We'll make it an even hundred. It's all about balance, which is what Homer's we supposed to do. Oh, we had run away. But what you can do, you're like, well, how close am I? You know, what's what's going on here? So you set this. Actually, you can even set this to zero. You set this to 140. You're like, well, show me the overall, because you know, I'm not getting the right number here, so we start looking at what it compares. I think if we return this to 115 and we make this 125, we'll keep the tank at 5, it doesn't really matter as much. I want the electrolyzer to go to maybe two, and then I run. And already we're seeing some answers coming through. Back to graphical, and you start learning things. And this is how you work for Homer. And then again, that's how you do a fuel cell. Hope that helps.